Hello, how are you? I'm Emma and I'm going to help you do some artwork today. And we're carrying on with our ideas of um, identity and who we are. And I thought we'd have a little think about our families and the people that look after us. And I thought we could create a little totem pole of um, people that are special to us. Now, um, I am going to send you a picture of a very famous totem pole, one that's in the Pitt Rivers Museum in Oxford, and that stands at an amazing 11 metres tall. We're not going to make something that big. <laughs> Ours is going to be smaller. And the one in the Pitt Rivers comes from a Canadian group of people called the Haida community. And the Haida community carved this huge, great big totem pole to stand outside their chief's house and they carved it and it was covered in little kind of um, creatures and people and all of these carvings represent different people in the chief's family some of them from history and stories that are associated with them so uh, I thought we could use clay today because it's a bit easier than carving um, <laughs> a giant piece of Canadian redwood so should we have a look down here and I'll show you how to make your own version of a totem pole, okay? Right, so I've got some clay on my desk. I've kind of cut it up into chunks already. You might have some red clay or some grey clay, doesn't really matter. You might also have some clay, which is called air dry clay. That means once we've made it and it's dry, you can paint it as well if you like. So a totem pole is long and tall. So we need to think about how to make our clay go long and tall. And clay doesn't want to go long and tall, does it? It's quite heavy. So um, what I sometimes use is a little block of wood with a hole in it. And then one of these that your grown-ups might have, it's kind of like a, a kebab skewer. Um, if you don't have any of those, you could maybe find a chopstick or a twig in the garden that's quite straight. And if you don't have a block of wood, you could just use a giant ball of clay, couldn't you, at the bottom? Or a potato cut in half. Be inventive. Think of something that will hold up your stick. So you can either put your stick into a giant ball of clay, doink, or you can put it into your wooden block. And then we're going to build up the little tiny heads on our totem pole. We're going to also put in some kind of interesting shapes as well and spaces. To make it more interesting and to make it more textured so you can get some little balls of clay you can start modeling them i've made some funny little faces here they don't have to look exactly like people in your family they could just represent different things there we are so i always find with a ball of clay it is much easier to pinch it and squash it and make a shape like a nose, there we are, there's my nose, rather than make a nose and try and stick it on because usually the noses fall off. So try and squash and shape your ball of clay to make the shape that you want. Now, I really love putting lots of texture in clay. So um, have a look around, see what you can find. I have got some nice twirly string. I've got some bits of dried pasta. What's this, a cotton bud, a giant bead, some weird kind of netting, a spork left over from a trip to a restaurant, a comb, some lovely different shaped beads and things like that. They're all going to make different marks when I press them into my clay. So I suggest that you have a really good experiment first of all and see what sort of shapes you can make. I've got this kind of bead that looks a bit like a flower. I'm just doing some like nice flowery hair all over this person. You can do whatever you like. What I suggest though, is you do most of the decoration and then we'll add the details for the person, okay? So maybe we're gonna put two eyes on there. Should we use this kind of like round straw? See what happens. One, looks a bit like a hedgehog. <laughs> two, that's quite good, isn't it? It's half person, half, half animal. Uh, maybe a button on the side to make a mouth. There we are. Little tiny face. Whoa, amazing. Right, so you can go uh, go to town and get exploring and see what different patterns you can make Whoa. on your shapes. Use different shapes as well. 
I've got a ball. I've got kind of like a semicircle, a 3D semicircle. I've got a cylinder. I'm going to try and decorate them all. I've got like a big squash cylinder as well. What's this one? Like a lovely cone, a round bottomed cone. You might find that you've got some fabric. You can wrap your clay in that and get some nice prints off of it. What else have I got here? I've got some pegs. Maybe you can press the peg. Oh yeah, in to make a design all the way around. So it's really what you can find to put into your clay that's interesting and that grown-ups don't mind you borrowing. This one's quite cool. This is like a glass bowl. I thought this might make a nice star shape. Let's have a look. Let's give it a squash. Oh, sometimes you need to use a bit of muscle, especially if your clay's hard. Let's have a look. Oh, nice. I like that. I'm going to do one on the other side as well. Right, so once you've finished experimenting, it's time to bring all of your elements together in your totem pole. We're not going to be able to make it 11 metres tall. And today, because our sticks aren't very, very strong, I suppose if you've got a chopstick, they're a bit stronger, aren't they? Um, we might, they might get a bit wibbly wobbly, but the thing about clay is it's full of water, and when we lay it down, it will dry out. So don't worry too much. But the sensible thing to do is kind of start at the bottom and put on some big bits. And then as you go up towards the top, put on some thinner bits. You might have to spend a bit more time than me oh, threading the heads on. Oh, look, that looks quite groovy already. Maybe I'm going to put on, oh, what should I put on next? See, I'm indecision. I'm going to put another head on. Now on the totem pole in the pit rivers, all the animals and people all look in the same direction. So just bear that in mind as well. I think I'm going to put this one on next. Yeah, that semicircle one. And I'm going to put another head. Do you think I've got room for, to put that one at the top? I kind of quite like the idea of having that one right at the top. Oh, look, there's still some room. Maybe I can fit the other head on there as well. Oh, it's a really long head. There we are. There we go. Da -da -da. Not too wobbly. And like I said, if you want to, you can lie it down let it dry for a couple of days and then you can kind of paint it as well so i'd love to see some pictures of your lovely totem heads and your totem poles if you don't want to do faces you could just do lots of different textures couldn't you and slide them all on together a totem pole is just kind of lots of different units or designed units all working together to make a huge structure make something look really lovely i'll let you decide okay you take care See you later.